morning. I want to welcome you to worship with Trinity United Methodist Church today. We have three announcements I'd like to make before we get into worship. Our preschool is having their Otis Spanunker cookie dough sale, and orders need to be turned in on Wednesday, February 17th. They have various cookies you can order. The price of each is $19. Checks need to be made out to Trinity Preschool. Um, information, um, you can call the office and they'll be able to accommodate you, but the order blanks are out here at the Welcome Center in the church. We thank you in advance for helping our preschool with this fundraiser. The second one is today is our first day of, of um, Wi-Fi connection, of reaching out to the community. If you are in need of a Wi-Fi connection or know of someone who needs it, our building will be open from three until six today. They'll come through door two and proceed to the basement um, to use the Wi-Fi down there. And then lastly, we're going to be having a Ash Wednesday worship service. That is on February 17th at 6.30. Um, you can join us in the sanctuary, but it will also be broadcasted online. Uh, so you can join us for that particular worship. This gathering is now convened by the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We are in the presence of an unspeakable love. I want to share with you a little bit about um, Leviticus. That's where we're at right now. Um, a lot of us have had a lot of chatter about reading Leviticus this week because it has a lot of um, offerings and sacrifices that you're off to, to um, offer the Lord, a lot of rituals for the priests. And in our century... All of those ancient practices are lost, but there's still relevance and importance to us in our day and age on how we utilize those offerings and sacrifices in worshiping the Lord. Now, in a previous week, I read in my Jewish study Bible twice the scripture, none shall appear before me empty-handed. And they were talking about um, worship services, acts of remembrance, um, that no one was supposed to come to worship the Lord and not have an offering. So I want to ask you today, in your act of worship, what offering will you bring to the Lord? In our psalm reading that will come later, it also says, we are to ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bringing an offering and come into his courts. Now we can be like Cain and give an offering that reveals our heart does not fully desire to honor God. Or we can be like Abel, whose offering still testifies of his righteousness even today. Abel's offering was acceptable to the Lord. Now the Lord did speak to Cain with a loving rebuke, warning him that sin was crouching at his door, but that he had the ability to master it. Our offering, or lack thereof, reveals our heart attitude towards the Lord. So I ask you today, what offering do you bring? Contemplate on it. For there are spiritual laws that are set in motion with the gift that you bring. Some people come with a consumer's attitude, wanting to know what will I receive. Others come out of duty. Some are sincerely troubled and need the Lord, yet no offering is presented. While others come giving lavishly to the Lord, as the Lord is worthy. As we enter into worship, what sacrificial offering will you bring today? Will you bring a sacrifice of a heartfelt confession with a cry to be cleansed, forgiven, and set free? 
Will you bring an offering of praise and adoration that exuberates your desire to honor and exalt the Lord, the King of kings, and our Savior, Redeemer, in gratitude for what the Lord has done for you or for your family or someone else? Will you offer to the Lord yourself as an offering to be used for his glory? Out of the overflow of what you have received and have been blessed with, will you offer a portion to the Lord as an act of praise and gratitude? Will your offering be acceptable to the Lord this day? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. scripture reading today is from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare the glory of, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nation are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all of creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you were equating that song, I Surrender All, to the offerings that we will soon talk about, that would be equivalent to a whole burnt offering. Surrendering all of your totality of your being would be a whole burnt offering unto the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray your Holy Spirit would guide the words that I speak, that you, O oh God, would speak to the hearts of those who are listening, bring clarity to these offerings, Lord, for they are beautiful, and they are our calling, too, as your disciples. So bless the hearing of the word today for your kingdom and for your glory. Amen. Yes, our conversations this week among the few of us were if we were alive back in the day of Moses, all we'd ever do was be presenting a sin offering before the Lord each and every day. We would have to take a sacrifice and have it sacrificed. And then we were talking about not only would it be time consuming, but can you imagine the cost? And I think that's really where it lies. Can you imagine the cost of your sin? And yet there's not one of us wealthy enough to atone for our sins. And that's why Christ came into the world. He came to offer himself as the Lamb of God. He shed his blood so that we could be redeemed. He gave his lifeblood so that we could be cleansed of our iniquities and justified before God and presented as an offering unto the Lord so that the Lord's justice could prevail in the world. Now in Leviticus, in the beginning of Leviticus, there are five sacrificial offerings that are mentioned. And each one of those offerings is costly. Now, at first, I want you to consider the location where the Israelites were. They're in the desert where resources are scarce. There isn't a five and dime or a Walmart or a Kroger down the street. The only resources they have is what is with them and what they're able to create. To give an offering from the flock or a grain offering with oil and frankincense, was to take a scarce resource and commit it to the Lord out of an act of love and devotion. Giving these sacrificial offerings to the Lord was premeditated and not a secondary or impulsive. They had to make plans before they went and offered. They had decisions they had to make. What lamb, what ram, what offering? Who was going to prepare it and take it? It took an intentional planning on the part of the giver to administer these sacrificial offerings. These offerings were not done in haste, but took a significant amount of time to prepare and bring. It's doubtful that many of us today put that much effort into contemplating how we're going to worship the Lord let alone offering a sacrificial offering that is costly of our time and resources. Some people can barely worship 60 minutes or part with something more than a $20 bill. There are complaints and grumbles as to what pleases them or what doesn't. You've heard them, the, the worship wars, right? I like this music, but not this word, music. People like to grumble, but they don't give any thought to what they give to worship, what they bring to worship. Is it acceptable to the Lord whom they profess to worship? So who really is being pleased and worshiped here today? You or Yahweh? Let us learn from the Israelites about how we are to adequately present an offering to the Lord, for there are spiritual laws that come into play. The first one is, again, the offering for the atonement of your sins. 
Now, the individual would bring an offering to the priest and offer it. Then there were, the priest would give offerings for their atonement for their sin and then for the sins of the community. And I think that it's important to realize that we have a responsibility to ask for forgiveness. Our, our offering today is our humbleness and humility in recognizing our need for God's grace in our lives to redeem us and to heal us. And then we also need to recognize as institutions and churches and communities that we have embedded sin, that, that we've abandoned the teachings of the Lord and our culture has embraced the ways of the world. And we as a believers and community of faith need to confess sins beyond our individual sin, but also pray for prayers of supplication and intervention for our community and our nation and world and institution in regards to our sinfulness, our greed, the oppression that occurs on other people. We're to be intercessors, and that too is an offering. But I really want to talk about not the atoning sacrifices for our sin, but the other three offerings that are in this opening of Leviticus. There's atoning sacrifices that I just said that are about cleansing people of their sin individually and collectively. And in the ancient days, that needed to happen over and over and over again. It was not a permanent atonement for your sins. That only happened through Christ on the cross. In ancient Israel, non-atoning sacrifices were brought to the altar of God to honor God. And there were three that were mentioned. For Christians, all of these offerings are free will offerings. You're probably familiar with some of them, though you might not associate with the Leviticus name attached to them. I want to read to you, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says... Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. These three free will offerings that I'll talk about is about an attitude of the heart. You, the individual, have been redeemed. You, as an individual, have been forgiven of your sins and trespasses. And God, Lord, wants to come into your life and fill you and complete you. And he's done a mighty thing on your behalf, just reconciling you to him so that you can have a fellowship with him. And out of that healing and deliverance, out of that outpouring of love that you've received from God, your heart should be changed. Your attitude and approach towards God should be transformed. You should be walking into a living, loving relationship in a way in which you realize everything you have is a blessing and a gift from God. Even though you might labor and toil and produce things made by your own hand, it is still Yahweh who provides for you. And with that, we are to rejoice and tell Abba, Father, thank you. Thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for interceding. How is your worship? How is your heart approach towards God? Do you have a, a generous heart towards the Lord, or do you have a stingy heart? A lot of people, I've heard them say when we get around to maybe a stewardship campaign, all you ever do, church, is ask for money. No. I beg to differ. The church is asking you to mature in your faith and how you worship the Lord. To give an atoning sacrifice, one is led into an awareness of sin. That has to come first. That, that recognizing your need 
to have forgiveness for your sins. Out of that, we move on to the other three. To offer a sacrifice before the Lord, the priest and the individual had to be purified and cleansed by water. This was a ritual that had to happen. Your priests and individuals had to be clothed, okay? So we read in Leviticus that the, and in Exodus, um, God gave orders and instructions on how the priests are to be clothed. They are to be cleansed of their own iniquities, their outward filth. They're supposed to go through a purification rite. Nothing unholy was to come before the Lord. And then the priest had specific outfits they were supposed to wear. Aaron had his unique uh, priestly garment and his sons had their unique priestly garments. They were not dressed the same. They did not have the same responsibilities before the Lord. And as an individual, when you brought your offering before the Lord, the scriptures told us you too were supposed to go through a ritual of cleansing. And your garments were to be clean before you presented yourself before the Lord. The equivalent of this today is coming before the Lord and confessing your sins. You know, that just because we came to Christ and asked for to be forgiven, even though Christ paid the price once and for all, we still continually acknowledge that we have sinned and have fallen short. And so our cleansing comes when we yet again go before the Lord and say, you know, Lord, forgive me. I did it again. Forgive me because I know this was wrong. Or forgive me. And so our cleansing today is not just at our baptism, but our cleansing today is when our hearts and minds are made right before the Lord once again. We are no longer hostile towards him, but we yield to him. We are cleansed and we are clothed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There are prayers that I pray the Lord all the time. Lord, cover this with the blood of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is, Lord, take your authority, your power, your presence, and take this unholy situation and purify it and make it right. Make it right. Sometimes I'm talking about me. Sometimes I'm talking about an event. Sometimes I'm talking about a relationship. But I'm always calling out to the Lord, not just to cleanse my heart and mind, but that the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ, would saturate the situation. That is how we're properly clothed before the Lord. There are three scriptures in the book of Revelation that state that we are all priests before the Lord. Remember a few weeks ago I told you I wished I would have had my, my, my two robes out. I would have called two people forward and had you wear a priestly garment because I want you to really understand this. You, as a believer in Jesus Christ, are a priest before Yahweh. You are called to honor and serve him through all your actions, behaviors, and thoughts. Revelations 1.6 says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and a priest to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Your life has purpose, importance, relevance before the throne of God. Don't take that lightly. So what you're reading in Revelations about the duties and the responsibilities of the priest and, and how they are to be clothed, how they are to be cleaned, and then what offerings come, that is your responsibility too in the current era. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are a priest. So here we go. The free will offerings or worship offerings are to be made before the throne of God just like they were in the day of Moses. 
The only difference is the altar of fire is before the throne of God, and it affects the whole totality of our nature and heart as an individual. And there's a specific order that was given in how you make these free will offerings. The first one is a whole burnt offering. And this is a living offering, an animal, made on the altar of fire. This offering was made to the Lord with the person's best, most costly sacrifice. You were to choose the choice lamb and bring it before the Lord. And I think that as we go through the Old Testament, we'll learn that there were times when Israel got sloppy and they didn't care what they brought. And they brought sickly lambs before the throne. And God is saying, wait a minute, I am Yahweh. You dishonor me with your offering. Your offering is to be your choice offering. Not out of secondhand seconds. Do you hear? The Lord has requirements here. We're not to get careless in our offerings. So we said today, I surrender all. <laughs> Beautiful song to start worship with. In our era, that is what a whole burnt offering is. As we are presenting ourselves before the Lord with sincerity of heart, and if you don't have sincerity of heart, well, you're not, you're not getting anywhere with this. Lord, I offer myself to you to be used for your kingdom's glory. Lord, I invite you in to be Lord of my life. And this is not just a one-time saying. I pray that prayer often with sincerity of heart. Lord, I'm yours. I invite you in. For believers, the living sacrifice we offer is ourselves. The sacrifice is at the offering of a totality of who we are on the altar of God. We do this because we have experienced the goodness of God and understand that without the Lord our God, our lives are lost. We resort back to living a life of evil and wickedness. It's only in fellowship with God that we are righteous. This follows our confession of sin and receiving forgiveness of sin. This type of offering comes out of the overflow of our heart with gratitude and praise. It is the foundation of who we are in Christ Jesus. It is how we become a people of the Lord for the Lord's glory. Romans 12, 1 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is that. This is the whole burnt offering you read in Leviticus. It is here that we lay down our desires of the flesh and live according to and willingly for the desires of Jesus Christ by word and spirit. second offering in Leviticus is a grain offering. I want you to envision the altar, and the altar has um, the whole burnt offering. The next one is a grain offering, and it's just like a handful of, of, of grain that has been uh, transformed into the finest flour, and it took hours. Now, I want you to think of the seed of the grain, and if, if you have a little I don't know, remember my science classes to know what they're called, <laughs> but, but you're grounding out the, the grain, making it fine. It takes time to prepare. It takes work and it takes effort to do that. And, and they would ground their seed. And I want you to stop and think, they're in the desert, they're in the wilderness. There's not a supply feed store down the street. What seed they have is the seed they have for the next harvest. Or it's the seed that they have 
for their next meal. And so they are taking something of great value and importance. And they want to offer it to the Lord. And so with this grain offering that took time and is costly, they added to it costly and rare oil and frankincense. And they prepared ah, a meal and took it to the priest for the priest and for the Lord. This offering is known as a memorial offering. It's an offering made by the labor of the individual. Now I want to stop and think about your own life here for a moment. And how you give the Lord your memorial offerings. Because the offering that you bring, yes, you're bringing it because of what you know and have experienced with God through Jesus Christ. But the reason it's a memorial offering is because God is going to remember your gift. It is God who will recall what you have committed to him out of your acts of service. He is going to recall that you have presented to him an offering of faith to glorify him out of your love and worship and adoration. God is going to remember your offering. There are two, two scriptures, two stories in scriptures that came to my mind about this this morning. One of them is in the Old Testament. I remember a story in the Old Testament, as we go through the Old Testament, you'll discover it, where uh, God had remembered that so-and-so had done something. God was reading a book of remembrance on somebody's life, and he remembered that this, this person had done something, and God chose to bless him because of what he had done, what God had reviewed about this person's life in his book of remembrance. I wish I would have found that earlier so I could have searched that. And then there's Cornelius in the New Testament. He was a Gentile, but yet he loved and worshiped the Lord. And, and out of his overflow of his love and devotion to God, he was benevolent to his community. And God remembered him. And he sent Peter so that salvation could come into his home. You see, your offerings, your costly offerings that you bring before the Lord to celebrate his goodness and his love and his mercy have purpose in the economy of God. He notices and he chooses to bless out of the outpouring and overflow of your love. God takes notice and chooses to bless you in return he multiplies the scarcity in your life so that you will have an abundance the next offering is the peace offering this is the third of the three that i'm going to talk about this peace offering was also placed on the on the altar of fire so you have the living sacrifice then you have the grain offering which is the memorial offering before the lord and now you have the peace offering. The peace offering is another animal offering. And it is brought into the house of the Lord, and you, you bring your whole family. You know, it, it's not for an atonement of sin. It's a fellowship offering. You go and you bring your family to the house of the Lord, and, and a portion, the portion of the, of the offering goes to the Lord as a fragrant offering. He takes notice of what you have given. He's taking notice that you want a relationship with him and that you intentionally brought this offering just to fellowship with him. And, and not only does the Lord receive a portion, the priest receives a portion. And then you take what's left over after it is cooked over a roasted fire and you share it with your family in the house of the Lord. 
you share it with your family. And this just blows my mind here that I'm thinking about the whole family coming together to the tabernacle and presenting and offering before the Lord like this, saying, Lord, we're here to worship you, and we, we want to please you with this pleasing aroma unto the Lord and glorify you, and we want to fellowship in your presence in the house of the Lord with our family. What a beautiful moment and experience this must have been we look at this offering through the lens of the New Testament it is our Holy Communion we partake of Holy Communion it is a peace offering that God has prepared through his son Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the high priest and so this offering is communion between God the Father Jesus Christ, the high priest, and us. And we are all partakers of the family of God. This is a holy, sacred meal that Christ has prepared for us so that our fellowship with Yahweh will continue, that we will remember the mighty acts and deeds that Christ has done for us on the cross. Calvary is a unifier. Jesus rectified and healed and redeemed us so that we can be in a right relationship with God the Father. Well, not only is our peace offering here at the communion table, our peace offering is when we do acts of benevolence out into the world and in our communities. peace offering can be our general offering that we offer. It can be where does the world need peace? Who is in need of seeing and experiencing the Lord and you in some way taking Christ to another human being through your acts of service, through your prayers, was challenged this week or last week. I went and saw uh, a mentor who said, Lois, I want to challenge you to every day pray for one stranger. I haven't done it. I've tried. Every day I want you to pray 30 seconds or less. And you only have 10 seconds to do it. So they said, as you're out and about, learn how to be sensitive to what is going on and what you see and how you perceive people. And you will see a person in need. And really, you only have about 10 seconds to respond. If you take longer than 10 seconds, you probably won't do this. You'll talk yourself out of it. He said, Lois, I want you to go to that person and say, do you have a specific need? May I pray for you today? And pray for them 30 seconds or less. I said, you know what? I teach this all the time. <laughs> And you just challenged me to do this. Our, our, our staff here a few weeks ago had a situation where somebody came in and they shared a heartfelt need and the person left. And I said, y'all need to speed it up and pray for them in the moment while they're there. And they said, yeah, but we prayed as that person was walking down the hallway and that's okay. Yeah, I know. But let's, it's, there's power in praying for a person when they're present. I'm just saying our peace offering isn't just this beautiful meal that Christ presented. We are to be peacekeepers out into a hurting world. And we are true peacekeepers when we take Christ out into the hurting world. And they can see and hear Christ in us. So today, we fellowship with the Lord. We're fellowship with, we are already fellowshipping with the Lord. But it's our responsibility to be the peacekeepers into the world and take Christ out into the world and glorify the Lord through our acts, our offerings, through the totality of who we are. I hope you've heard the beauty of the Lord in these ancient Levitical sacrificial offerings. They are relevant to us 
and they matter to our own personal spiritual growth. And they are the truths that will transform a hurting world. So I ask you today, what offering do you bring with the sincerity and the totality of your being? What offering do you lay down? Have you offered your whole complete being to the Lord? And do you trust him with the scarcity of your resources? Do you need to experience the peace and then take the peace out to others? Let us take a few minutes before we enter in to Holy Communion. Abba, Father, forgive us of our sins. And oh, those many selfish, self-centered, greedy decisions that we make that deny you lordship in our lives. Lord, we ask you to cleanse us of the iniquities of our sins and renew our heart and mind and spirit within. Help us to be grateful and faithful and choose to honor you with the totality of our being. And let us not begrudge the offerings that you ask us to make, but learn how to trust in the economy of Yahweh and choose to be a surrendered blessing to the throne of God and for humanity as Christ is our example. Jesus, we thank you for this holy meal that you have prepared for us that we may truly dine in the fellowship of the Lord God who created us and chose to redeem us of our sin that we may delight in his goodness once more and be set free from sin and death. Lord, oh God, oh God, humbly we come to receive our daily bread and to praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, you shared your peace with us when you gathered and formed us from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into us. But life with you was not enough for us. Even in our rebellion, you choose to clothe us and provide in a way, and chose to provide a way in the world. We are thankful that you continue to seek us, even in our wandering ways. Jesus, Prince of Peace, you separated us from our sin in a way we never could 
in a way we never can. You were a vessel of peace in a world that did not welcome you, but you persevered in love in the face of hatred. You taught us that forgiveness is possible even in the midst of extreme suffering. We are thankful that you continue to love us. Holy Spirit, you hold peace within us despite our circumstances. You tend to the deepest parts of our innermost being, nurturing peace so that it may grow. You lead us in paths of righteousness, showing us the way to bear love to the world. When hatred speaks its convincing lies, you show us the truth. We are thankful that you continue to sanctify us, even in our careworn ways. Holy Spirit, move in this place today and in the homes and the hearts of those listening so that we all may become instruments of peace, able to sow love so that hatred does not take root. Manifest the presence of our Lord in our hearts, in our community, throughout the nation, and in all places throughout the world. And draw all people to the Lord God through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Redeemer. May our sacrificial peace offering, the surrender of self which we freely offer you, and your offering of life to us, through receiving this bread and cup you present here at the communion table, truly be communion with the triune God and one another. May the mystery of our faith manifest here at this table today. We ask that you, your reconciling peace and love, abound in us and through us for your glory and honor. Amen. In the face of betrayal and impending death, Jesus ate one final meal with his disciples. As he did so, he broke the bread and gave thanks for it, and then he offered it to each one, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks for it. Then he offered it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink, this is my blood shed for you. With this holy meal of bread and wine, we are reminded of and experience anew God's covenant of peace with us. Every time we share this meal, we proclaim the triumph of peace and love. Merciful Lord, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I ask that you come forward as you are ready. Come and eat as we share the peace of God.
us of how good you are. You nourish us in our journey of faith, reminding us that you are always with us. As we journey through Lent, prepare us to hear your call. Of your peace. As we receive your peace, may we see where we can share it with others. Guide us with our words and actions. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. We give you thanks for who you are and the blessing of being called your people. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bring into our remembrance that we are indeed an offering. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. This concludes our worship today. Mm -hmm.